but then something else happened. Then suddenly there came on her the change with tremendous moments of our lives can overtake some time the human soul and hold it up towards the luminous souls. Now that is the moment now. Now why this moment has arrived? Why in such a great event of the death of a Satyavan, this moment is arriving in the case of Savitri? Because she is still, she is calm. She is not measuring her loss with tears and all that kind of a thing. She is not, I mean, emotional in the human sense at all, you see. Therefore, she is ripe enough to receive the tremendous moment. It does not happen in the case of ordinary man. It happens very, very rarely. In the case. Perhaps it may happen in the case of a person like Monet. I don't know, you see. If you see the description and the way he did, it might have, you see. Which in tremendous moments of life can overtake some time, human soul, and hold it up to us as human. Yes, so that moment has come, it takes possession of the soul and shows to the soul, yes, this is your luminous source. You look at it, be under it, and it will take charge of you in every respect. So that moment has now kind of prompted her to go to that particular stage, you see, to hold up towards this luminous soul. Now, <clears throat> tremendous moment, what does it do? This moment has arrived, what does it do? It brings, it brings, yeah, uh, here he is describing two things. It brings two changes. The tremendous moment is bringing two changes. The first change is the luminous source is shown, of course. And then the first thing, the veil is torn. The thinker is no more. And only the spirit sees. And all is known. This is what that moment has done already. The veil is torn between your soul and the luminous source from which it came. That veil is torn. The thinker is no more. You have gone beyond the mental being. You are no more Manomaya man now. See, you have gone beyond the mental being and you can have spiritual perception of things. You can step into the occult aspects of all that is going to happen there soon. See. Thinker is no more, only the spirit sees. So everything is now by the spirit. And the moment the spirit sees, obviously all is known. All is known, you see. So that is the first thing. I mean, Savitri now knows what is going to happen. I mean, the entire uh, the chart may not be available here, but now she has got kind of a confidence. Yes, the moment has come. Now this, this, this kind of thing should happen, you see. All is known. The future is known immediately. The details of the future may not be known, but it is seized immediately by her. Only the spirit is seized and all is known. So there is a kind of an assurance now, the moment that moment arrives, there is a kind of an assurance. Yes, things will be all right, you see, immediately, you see. Pardon me? When, when it says the thinker no more, yeah. that means the mind becomes silent? No, no, it's not going silent. It's not just silent mind. It is not there at all. It's not there at all. Uh. But the veil is torn, and what is that veil? Which was torn? The veil, I told you, the veil between the human soul and its source. Oh. In the previous line. So the connection is established. Yeah, that is gone. So naturally, there is no question of mind there at all. There is no kind of a silent mind also, nothing. It is only the, the spirit which is going to see the whole thing. Yeah. Only the spirit sees and all is known. See, this is the certitude. All is known. The moment the spirit sees, all is known. In other words, this is a kind of present, met to Savitri by death. All is known now, the future. Until now it was held back 
the death has come, this has happened, the moment has arrived and Savitri rolls now everything. So it's a kind of a gift, kind of a present. You want to yeah. Savitri by, yeah. yeah. He is playing a positive role in that sense, if you really see it, you see. Otherwise, Savitri would not have known all that thing, what is going to happen. Because this has happened, therefore all is known now. The path is open. So that is the first thing which has happened. And the second thing, tremendous moment, the first thing, all is known by that. Second thing, a calm power seated above our brows. The calm power. It is taking possession of everything. That calm power. It is no more now you or me or my soul or her soul or it is. It is the power now which is taking everything in its charge, in her charge, completely. Then a calm power seated above our brow is seen, unshaken by our thoughts and deeds. That power is, doesn't care about our thoughts and deeds. You see. It stillness bears the voices of the world, immobile. It moves, nature looks on life. So it is unperturbed, it sees from above, everything looks on life, what is going to happen on that thing, you see. A calm power above Savitri's head. Nothing matters now there for her. You can see the face of Savitri herself, you see. Absolutely confident, self-possessed. It's in unshaken by our thoughts and dreams. It saves immutably, it's far seen and now this is what it does. It is that power which is going to govern the future. It is going to shape, it is going to mold all the events, all the circumstances. It is going to take charge of it. So this is the big thing which is happening now in the case of Savitri because in her case, the tremendous moment has arrived. The tremendous moment has arrived for the action now. Which shapes, you see, it is not going to simply observe or watch. It is not the work of usual time which is seen by that power. The far ends, far seen ends, not of usual time, but time which is shaped by her. It is going to give the direction to the time. Go like this, do like this, is it? It is time which is being driven by that calm power. It shapes immutably, is far seen, far seen, obviously. Which, are, which is not possible for the thinker to think of. It is beyond the mental capacity. It is the spirit's power. All is known, past and ends. They come together, you see, in that case. See. Now, still we could ask, what could be the past and ends? Obviously, in the immediate context, the problem is death cannot take away the soul of such a one and it has to come back. That is the first in end. One of the end is the, one of the ends is that it is already seen that power. In other words, the power is preparing time, shaping time towards that particular end. You see. But this is, this, is, this is this calm power. But she, knows she is going to shape everything now. But she knows this consciously. Yes, of course. Yeah, she knows. That's the great thing. It's tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. See, they were saying the tremendous moment has two elements. One is from Savitri, human Savitri, seeing her divine soul. The other one is the power now taking charge of everything, untouched and tranquil and measureless above, our striving will, his gaze controls, his gaze controls, 
You see, that's an important thing. Trouble and worry, looking, what is this weeping, crime, joy, happiness, etc., etc., nothing. It is now entirely under the control of that strong power, that calm power, you see. And in what way it is going to shape things, in what way it is going to control things, in order to mate with the glory it sees. His purpose is to seize the future glory of G capital. To match everything now with that is her struggle, is her, is her work, is her uh, involvement, association. The voice of life is tuned to infinite sound. Now he is elaborating on that. Basically, the purpose is to mate with the glory. It sees. Then one of the ways is life tuned to infinite sound, moments on great wings of lightning come and godlike thoughts surprise in the mind of her. So as a result of that meeting, these things can happen. In fact, further things can happen. Into the soul splendor and intensity. Now we come again to our present, you see. <laughs> godlike thoughts surprise in the mind of her. We, we shall see this thing like wings surrounding her completely. That calm power holding her own. So this is a different Savitri now, you see. It is not that human Savitri being seen there and surrounded by the wings of that calm power. To mate with the glory it sees, the spirit grows, the voice of life is tuned to infinite sound, the moments on great wings of lightning come, and godlike thoughts surprise in the mind of her. It is the soul splendor and intensity, a crescent of miracle birth is tossed. Now this is the thing. As a result of these two things, what has happened is there is a miraculous birth in the case of Savitri. Savitri is now awaking, taking birth in a full divinity to meet the hour to see. And therefore, in the night sky, the hard moon, the crescent is tossed to see, whose horn of mystery flows in a bright void as into heaven of strength and silence. You see, that birth in the context of strength and silence, calm, full of composure, thought is ravished, all this living mortal clay is seized and in a swift and fiery flood of touches shaped by harmonies unseen. Now, as a result of that new birth, what happens in that new birth? In that new birth, a new sight comes. New birth means new sight comes. Savitri is now going to see the whole thing in a different light, in a different way or together. <coughs> new voices in us form a body with a music for the gods. So music comes wearing its own forms. And that's what happens in that new birth. Actually, when a musician is singing or playing or whatever, if he is a real good musician, if he has sensitivity towards inner or higher things, if he is open to the worlds of true music, then that music comes with different colors, in different forms, in different associations, as if the gods are descending down. They are having different colors and things like that. You can see the colors floating down when the music is being played, you see, there, you see. music 